Welcome. Today, for week one, what we're going to do is take a look at how uh, Greenstone can be used to create digital collections. What you have to do first is to run the Greenstone Librarian interface, and when you do, you'll see a window that looks like this. What we're going to do is to import the first step, which is called gather, is to import some digital files into your collection. Before you can import though, you have to create a collection. So we're going to do File, New, and it's going to give us the name of the collection. I'm going to call it Week 1. And we'll put a little description of it. Then click OK. So now we have a blank collection. The first thing we want to do after that is to we want to import some documents to our collection. Now, gathering the documents. What kind of documents can we gather? Just about anything. We can take a look at our local machine, the machine you're on right now. You can look at your home folder or any drive. Uh, here, for example, here's our all our drives. What I'm going to do, actually, is grab stuff from the Dropbox. Um, in the Dropbox, assuming you've installed the Dropbox software, which I hope you have, uh, we see there's an LIS9720 folder and week one. We see we've got two documents in here. I'm going to move this over a little bit. You can see them. First one is a retrospective look at Greenstone. I'm going to drag that in. So all you do is left click on a document and drag it into your collection. And there it is. And I'm going to take the next one, which is building a digital library with Greenstone. Now these are both PDFs. I can bring in Word documents, uh, bring in this PowerPoint, text documents, HTML, JPEG images, all sorts of things, MP3, doesn't matter. So now I've got two things in. The next step is to catalog them, to assign metadata. So if we take a look over here, there's our first document, our second document. Right now, they don't have any metadata assigned to them. There's nothing here. These are all the metadata fields you can uh, add. These are the default ones. You see there's a title, a creator. Now, what does the DC mean? This means Dublin Core. Dublin Core, which you remember from cataloging class, is a metadata set. It's sort of a simplified mark. So it allows us to add cataloging information for these items. Now the first one is a retrospective look at Greenstone. So I can put the title in. Greenstone. Now, who is the author of this piece? Actually, I don't remember. So, But one thing over here, I can select this right click and open it in a external program. For example, I don't want that. And it shows me, okay, who wrote this? Ian Witten. I'm going to copy his name. And I'll go back to my, uh, let me get this out of the way a bit. No, I don't want to go down. Grab the window and move it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is paste it into DC Creator. There we are. Now we have multiple authors of an academic article. Surprise, surprise! David Bainbridge is in on it. So I'm going to copy him, and you also hit Enter. And now I've got room for a second value, and I'll put him in. There we go. That's all I want for that one. So now we've got a couple. We could add things for the date. We could add the language and various other things here. Uh, we'd also have all room for contributors. For example, if there was an illustrator, we could put an illustrator in and indicate their role as illustrator. Uh, the next one was building a digital library with Greenstone, and I think that was written by two gentlemen. Let's see. So let's put the title in. And this was written by Mr. K. H. Raja. S. E. K. H. A. R. A. N. And his co author is K. M. N. A. F. A. L. A. There we are. Okay. So now we've got a little bit of metadata in there. Our next step usually is to start thinking about things like access points. 
documents. Now, we could have more documents, and it was fine, too. Such as, now there's two types of things that would go for access points. Search engines is the first one we'll think about. So we can decide what we want to do. You notice by default, the full text of all documents, any digital files you bring in that have text in them, will be broken up into a full text search engine. You notice here is also one for titles. Do we really need to search titles? Mm, I'm going to say no, so I'm going to remove it. EX source. What's EX source? Is the file names. Do we really need to search the file names? No. That should always be removed. The next thing is what about browsable indexes? All right, so we have a search, but what about browse? If you look down here, they use the word classifiers. It's really an index. There's two indexes they've got here. One is the title index, one is the file name index. We don't really need an index based on file names, so I'm going to remove that. We'll keep the title one there, so we've got a simple index based on title. Now we did put in some authors, so we could add an author index here, probably what we want to do. If you scroll down, you see there's select classifier to add, so this is the type of indexes you can get. There's all kinds, date ones, hierarchy, but we're going to look for something at the top, an A to Z compact list. We're going to select that one, and I'll click Add Classifier. So now we're going to get one. What do we want to base it on? Well, it would be useful to know the authors of things. So I'm going to use the pull-down here to find... Um, called it DC Create. They call it. So that's going to be based on authors. That's fine. Um, we might want to change the name of the index. The word creator may confuse the person in the street. So the button name or name of the index we're going to call like something like authors. Sounds reasonable? Okay. So now we've got some indexes. The last part we would probably work on is the formatting. We're not going to do any formatting right now. Um, later on you'll see how we can add a banner to it. If we had a banner for our collection, we could browse to get a banner. Um, for example, I don't have any banners handy, but we'll get one later on. Um, so we'll skip the formatting. We'll use the default format that comes built in. It has its own style sheet and all that. We can change all that later, but right now we're ready to go. So first thing we have to do is build it to create our indexes. The build process brings the documents in, processes them with a the plugin. So you see it says being processed with plugins. Uh, these are plugins or small programs that import the source files, copy them, create uh, a HTML version of any document. So if you have a Word document, it'll create an HTML version of that. If there's a PDF document, it'll create an HTML version of that. So it's been processed. It's now creating the indexes. So there's the full text index being created based on text. So any word is searchable. In fact, there are no stop words. You can search for the letter A, the word the, if, whatever you want. So it's building the database, creating the files, and it's going to finish the build. Now when that's done, all we have to do is take a look at it. Build is finished. Click on Preview Collection. It will load it into your default web browser. And what we see here is the default style. Now again, the default style is not that nice. We have a banner up here, the default banner, which is really none. So we'll replace that later. We have the search. You know, so this is a search page. It's also on the home a page here, we have our two indexes, the title one and an author's index. So let's first try the search. We can search for the word A. <laughs> so I'm going to put A in. And we find there's two documents. Well, that would seem to be likely. Match the display. So we get two search results back. What if we wanted to browse titles? Well, there's our titles. You notice the display looks basically the same. The format of this display is controlled by that format tab. We can change it. What we get by default is the title and the file name and two icons. What are the two icons? This PDF icon here, and if we mouse over it says view the PDF document. So this was the source document, or original one that we imported to the collection. We click on that, there's the document. We can read it in the web browser. Very handy. This here is the HTML converted version. So if you didn't have a PDF uh, reader installed, you could still click on this and we'll see the PDF version. 
Now, this looks fairly good, but how well the conversion is done depends on the quality. Do some other stuff. So there's our titles one. Now, what about the authors index? Well, notice this looks different. Let's get rid of you. Well, what about this authors one? The author one is different. This is a hierarchical or category type of index. Why? Because any author may have one or more publications. So Mr. Bainbridge here, in fact, does have a number. Now he has only one in this collection. So if we click on his index entry for David Bainbridge, we see one. But any other documents he's authored will be down here. The same is true of any of these other people. Mr. Witten may have, in fact, he has only one document down here. In fact, he's on the same document as Mr. Bainbridge. So what we have here is what's called index nodes that could have any number of entries underneath them. So any type of index that has categories, think of authors, subjects, uh, and if you look at the example collections, you'll see tons of indexes in there that are hierarchical in nature. Uh, this only has a level of one. We only drill down to one, David Bainbridge, one document. A subject one could be a lot more complex in that we could drill down from something generic science, biology, and farther and farther down um, we would go till we get to the bottom of that. Now that's all there is to it, is, is to very, very simply creating a collection. So what I want you to do is send me a screenshot of this. Take a screenshot so we know you've run through and read the beginner's guide, which gives you a general overview of how this is going to work.